all the students uh, requesting madhumita madam to muting mute your uh, microphone so uh, this is the third day of this inauguration of online coaching classes and today we are going to start the final level online coaching class who will be appearing for december 2023 term of examination already around 100 students they are appearing uh, in the screen so we are uh, proud to have today with us one of our very senior council member manoj kumar ananji here in this lobby our senior director of studies cma arup bakchi joint director of studies madhumita sengupta ji our faculty member cma pranav kumar shikdar and in absentia our honorable president vice president and chairman tf committee cma binay ji so just like other two days we are going to start this final uh, classes today today our topic will be strategic financial management and our faculty member is pranav kumar shikdar is a very renowned and very senior faculty of this subject so we request the student to follow our website portal regularly we will be updating today the next class schedule till the end of this month as well as in their ms teams link the other classes will be attached so we have scheduled the program like this way this final classes will be on wednesday and friday two times in a day 11 to 1 will be one session and another session will be 3 to 5 so i request students to take full advantage of this online session because we have uh, we are having with us the best of the faculty pool across india and we are trying to give few very important classes that will be very much useful for their exam preparation for every subject each and every subject and hope they will enjoy the classes and enrich themselves with this i would like to hand over the microphone to dr madhumita shengupta for further proceeding madam please thank you sir thank you very much and uh, good morning students good morning everyone today as sir told us that today is our third day for the uh, online classes for the online live coaching classes for the same students for syllabus 22 and uh, as already mentioned we really have the best of faculty and we have a very renowned faculty today who will be taking the first session so all the best students and hope you are i mean each day you are enjoying these sessions and increasing your knowledge bank so uh, we also have with us i suppose we have uh, manoj sir cma manoj kumar anand sir chairman professional development committee yes sir so uh, like every day you can please enrich us with your positive vibes and positive thoughts. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Morning, sir. Good morning, sir. I think Vinay Sir, Vinay, you are on Vinay. live, sir. You are on live. Sorry? Sir, I think he's having you some difficulty to enter or some technical glitch or something. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, 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 Mr. Nandi, Mr. Bachi, Madhumita ji, our uh, CMA Pranab Sikdar Sahab. Uh, once again, we are here to impart uh, training for our final students today. I am sure the yesterday sessions would have gone very well. Yesterday sessions were good, sir. Yes, sir. It was very good. Around 500 students appeared. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I was only uh, uh, requesting on one small point that whosoever are our uh, learned speakers. 
uh, 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 at times, the people in north side doesn't catch up with the fluency of English, what they speak very fast. If we can just request our uh, uh, learned uh, teachers to be a little patient in explaining that, that's the only point. That is the feedback I got, I gave to you yesterday, basically. That was the only feedback. And the rest, uh, everything was good, I think. This will slowly catch up if we maintain the same uh, vigor and if we maintain the same joy among us. It will be really, really uh, become the most popular uh, online training. And with people like uh, Sikdar Saab and yesterday Mr. Neeraj was there, I'm sure that uh, things will be much better. So I thank all of you for allowing me uh, an opportunity to be with you in the morning. Once again, I thank you all uh, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And uh, without wasting any more time, we'll be starting the first session of the day, which is paper 14 on strategic financial management. And as you all know, this session. Madam Bakshi, sir. Madam Bakshi, sir. Yes, sir. I, I'll give. I'll ask for the vote of thanks. I'll just give the papers. So, <laughs> paper on. 14, uh, strategic financial management. This session is from 11 to 1. And again, as usual, the next session will be from 3 to 5, uh, Corporate and Economic Laws. And before uh, we start the session by uh, for today by our renowned uh, sir, I would ask our HOD and Senior Director Studies, or Shankar Bhakti sir, for his vote of thanks. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, at the outset, I'd like to thank Manoj sir for being there with us as always. He's joined us from Delhi office. Your sir, your words of encouragement not only encourages us, but by this, but the students community at large. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for the constant feedback because we know that you're in touch with members and students. So we welcome such feedbacks so that we can reorient these courses accordingly. I'd like to thank in absentia the chairman of the TF committee, Vinayaranjan sir, president, vice president, sir and all the others who are constantly encouraging us. Thank you, Dr. Nandi, for being the chief architect of this course, Madhumita Madam, IT team, and dear students, last but not the least, thanks to you, our faculty today is CMA Shikda sir, Pranav Kumar Shikda sir, a very senior member who has industrial level experience, industry level experience, as well as academic. So I'm sure he will be gaining from his vast knowledge resource. Thank you, Shikda sir, and dear students, you have already gone half the way, rather more than half the way, your intermediate past. So now it's just the horizon of being a full fledged CMA is just around the corner. Please do not spare any effort. Please do not drop any terms. Sit for your exams with full sincerity. If you study in a structured manner, follow our study material, our online classes, our training programs, I'm very sure each and every one of you will come up with flying colors. All the best towards your future, towards your career and being a successful CMA, which is the most preferred profession in and around the country and globe. Thank you so much. Over to you, Madhubita Madam, for taking the session forward. Thank you, sir. And uh, now we'll start all the best to all the students from all of our side and we start the session for today uh so was there on the very first day so just in short uh his uh profile a qualified professional fellow cost and management accountant mba finance mcom with uh an experience of 27 years of uh, industry experience and about 30 years of rich in-depth knowledge and extensive experience in teaching, training and development and administration. He uh, has got areas of expertise in financial accounting, corporate finance, financial turnkey project management, budgeting, profit planning, cash flow management, receivables management, negotiation skills, financial analysis, cost planning, cost estimation and cost control. So without going on and on, what we want to tell you that he is one of our renowned faculty and one of our best faculty out of which will benefit such a lot. So without wasting much of time, it's over to you, sir, to start uh, today's session. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 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 Th
thank you. Thank you for being a part. boosting uh speech to us to uh, i mean students who are there definitely. definitely shall i yes sir please please yeah okay good morning dear students good morning to one and all and i must congratulate you on your success for completion of cma inter and moving i wish you all the best in your success journey towards the final CMA final and I think almost all of you are appearing for the December term of the examination. In this regard, I would like to say few points. One, try to attend the classes as per the schedule given and try to take benefit out of it and please post your doubts and cooperate with the faculty and take all the necessary support and other materials from the institute from time to time. I also request our Directorate of Studies to publish the updates with respect to tax or indirect taxes or corporate laws, if any, that are applicable for December term of the examination as early as possible. And I also wish you a very grand success in the upcoming examination. And meantime, you may try to complete the formalities like industrial oriented training program or 100 hours computer training or 
nine months com training completion, whatever is applicable to you and pending from your end also. All the very best. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. It's a delight to start the morning with your words and uh, we'll start the session. Uh, Prolog, sir. Hope uh, we are audible and it's clear now. Uh, sir, you may start your session. Yes, sir. You may start, sir. Into heater, do you touch? I want to get one at Chicky. Says for an at say, and I want to say, yes, 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 Good morning to Dr. Nundi sir. Good morning to Mr. Arup Bhakti sir. And also good morning to respected Madam Madhumita Sengupta and all the officials which are actually associated with this online coaching. So I have a pleasure of presenting this strategic financial management before you and First, I'll be discussing some points and then I'll come to my presentation. Remember, you have already gone through this capital budgeting technique in your intermediate level. That is the first topic so far the investment decision is concerned. Now, before going to start the subject, what I like to uh, convey to you that the strategic management is a nothing but it is a versatile concept and it is actually applicable not only in India but also in the various parts of the world and before financial management we are just mentioning strategic. Now actually if we look into the concept of formal planning this planning is nothing but it is peeping into the future standing on the present platform. But with the passage of time and since the competition is huge, we are not in a position to compete unless and until we are having the very perception which is called strategic management. Now strategic management where we are going to have the concept called strategic planning. Similarly, keeping pace with this, we are having the concept that is called strategic financial management that is meant for actually long term. Now, the ultimate objective of the business or the company is to maximize the wealth of the shareholders. Now, in this process, strategic planning is actually been playing a pivotal role so for the maximization of the shareholder wealth are concerned. Now, so for the examination purpose and examination curriculum is concerned, remember since it is a final level topic, so the questions that that are expected that is of managerial level and you should have some concepts and conceptual ability that you have to build so that you can come with flying colors so far the examination is concerned. Now, let us proceed with the uh, concept and let me present the matter to you. So, we will be coming slowly, we will be covering this 
subject now at the first instance i have just written what i have said strategic financial management involves not only controlling the finances of a business but also handling them to succeed so controlling is definitely a very important financial role so for the financial controller of a company he has to take into account and financial controller will be reporting to the director finance now i had the opportunity of working in many private and public sector organizations and based upon the management hierarchy the concept of financial control etc which is actually being envisaged now attaining the aims and objectives of the company and ultimate object objective i have already told you to increase the value of the shareholder over time that is wealth maximization now until an organization can manage if it itself strategically because when i am talking about planning it may be related to short term planning and also the perception which is known as long term planning so in the context of short term planning we are going to take decisions which are actually related to one year but when i am talking about long range planning that may exceed beyond one year and it may extend to say 5 to 10 years also that is called long term strategy planning now every company having certain visions missions goals and objectives and targets similarly the objective of the strategic financial management is to formulate the clear strategies and that will be actually been practiced in the corporate level so that the goals with maximization of the shareholders can be done now strategic financial management is about creating profit for the company and ensuring an acceptable investment return you see nowadays in the context of responsibility accounting so what the responsibility accounting is concerned nowadays all the business organizations having multiple strategic business units they are having certain responsibility centers and with the concept of responsibility centers we are having cost center profit center investment center revenue center so and so forth so the objective of the strategic financial management again to get an adequate return that may be an economic value added that is eva or it may be the concept of return on investment that is rota and rona what is rota return on total assets and rona that is return on net assets now we are proceeding towards capital budgeting as because i am not going to teach you new things because you are already aware of what is capital budgeting just we are going to recapitulate and also what are the types of questions that may come in your examination and how to answer the same and overall there will be some concepts the concepts which are actually being required to write the examination paper in the examination hall with the time management that is our objective now financial management is one of the most essential area of any organization as i have already started it begins with investment decision in long term assets that is capital budgeting decision now capital budgeting decisions lays lays down the foundation stone of the financial management that is why the success of financial management depends on right capital budgeting application now what is right 
because it depends upon certainty or uncertainty. Under risk and uncertainty, or there might be certain causes like inflation, and how you are going to practice and apply the concept of capital budgeting in the context of rising price levels, in the context of uncertainty, in the context of risk that we are going to discuss and you are going to apply this, how the problems which may come in your examination and how to answer this in a best manner. Now, I have already told you capital widening decision relates to decision of investment in long term projects. Now, it is also termed as capital expenditure or capital investment. And the objective is to generate future cash flow by incurring the capital expenditure. Now, here by cash flow, we definitely mean profit of the tax. And with that, we are going to add back the amount of depreciation so that we can have the cash inflows and cash outflows is nothing but that is when we are going to purchase any machine plant and machinery or we are going to invest in projects okay then there will be a cash outflow and also there will be requirement of working capital that we are going to discuss slowly for example the purchase of new equipment expansion of production capacity buying another company research and development and so on so these are the examples of capital expenditures capital budgeting involves large cash outlays for generating future return of the company so remember future return here means you see it is not within a month or within a week or six months but it is a long term. So once a capital budgeting decision is committed, it is often difficult to reverse. So that's why we may say that capital budgeting is nothing but it is an irreversible decision. Once you have taken, you are not in a position to go back and to start a new capital budgeting process because huge amount of money which is actually being required and you know money is having opportunity cost. Okay. Now, what is opportunity cost? I think you remember that is say if you want to justify that cost is opportunity cost, then cost should fulfill two important conditions. One is resources are scarce, and each resource should have an alternative use. So Opportunity cost. To be an opportunity cost, we have to consider resources as scarce, each resource having an alternative use, and money has some got some opportunity cost. Now, going further, basic features of capital budgeting because we want to enter into the deep concept of capital budgeting for that. These are actually nothing but it is a background and it is a background because when you are entering into a cinema hall and uh, seeing a picture, you see before that there are certain uh, captions that will be coming that what are the what for what is the name and who, who are the uh, functionalities involved so and so forth. And here also we are having that background and slowly and slowly we'll be entering into the subject. Now, if we look into the basic features of capital budgeting, then number one that is coming in our mind is nothing but capital budgeting decisions have long term implications. Now, what is the meaning of long term implications? You are going to invest the money today and you are going to get the return not within one year, but exceeding one year maybe three to five six ten years depending upon the uh, volume of the project depending upon the capital intensity of the project so and so forth now 
these decisions involve substantial commitment of funds. Now you see, for capital writing decision, we'll be having huge amount of funds that we have to commit and to employ so for the capital capital budget is concerned. So that's why it takes into account the concept this decision involves substantial commitment of funds. I've already told these decisions are irreversible because if you take a wrong decision, you are not in a position to revert back. So money will be lost and remember money has got some opportunity cost. Now, the next important point is this decision determine the future growth of the firm. Obviously so because in a competitive scenario, if you want to compete, so there are two environments, internal environment and external environments. So internal environment is nothing but which are coming in the form of internal resources that are actually being deployed within an organization. But so far, external environments are concerned. There are so many forces like government regulations, inflations, then competi competi uh, uh, competition, and so on and so forth. So we are going to have the concept of capital budgeting in a sense that we are considering about the future growth of the firm and we are going to increase the shareholders fund that is equity share capital plus reserves and surpluses minus accumulated losses minus miscellaneous expenditure to the extent of return off that is called shareholders firm fund to the maximum extent <coughs> another feature of this capital budgeting is they involve a high degree of risk so we'll be discussing about risks and uncertainty We'll be using the concept called standard deviation. We'll be using the concept that is called coefficient of variation. We are going to use the concept of probabilities. So, when the time will come. Now, another important point is they involve a relatively long term period between the initial outlay and the anticipated return. So, that is to be understood because you are going to invest the money now. Okay, but return you are going to get after a certain period of time that may not be within one year, but it is related to number of years. Now, let us come to the different types of capital budgeting projects. Now, I had the opportunity of working in project team in a public sector and I have actually have hand on experience, practical experience. So for the financial management of the capital projects are concerned. But one thing I would like to tell you at this juncture, theoretically when you are talking about capital budgeting and when you are going to match this with the practical fields, these two are Although there are a certain relationship, positive relationship, but practical situation is different. So what I am going to discuss, I am going to share my practical experiences and views and what I have learned within this 40 years that I am going to share with you. Now, why it is important to know what are the different types of capital budgeting projects? Because until and unless you know, when you, you have been, when you'll be appointed as a finance manager, so until and unless you know, what are the different types of capital budgeting projects, then it will not be feasible for you to understand that what exactly the term means. And on that basis, you have to have some financial control and also you will be having certain strategic plans. Now we are going to divide these capital budgeting projects mainly under two heads. One is based on nature and another one is a different story that is 
based on exclusiveness. I think this term exclusiveness, it is new to you. Now, so far the based on nature is concerned, we'll be having the first item that is called replacement decisions. Okay, so what is replacement decision? It involves decision concerning whether an existing asset should be replaced by a newer one of the same type or with a different type of machine with the same operational use. So this actually also we can do in the context of operation aspect, operational aspect and also operational research in the form of replacement theory. Now, what is the objectivity of this? Such replacements are generally made to maintain existing levels of operations, although it might affect the profitability due to changes in expenses, the new machine might be either more expensive or cheaper to operate than the existing machine. So that is called replacement decision. Next, expansion decision. So what is expansion decision? It is a decision regarding whether the firm should increase its production capacity and operations by adding new products additional machines and so on. Now, one thing, as a student of cost and management accounting, you should know the very perception which is known as capacity costs and different capacities. Now, remember, theoretical capacity is nothing but is the 100% capacity. It is very difficult to achieve. Then comes capacity to manufacture and sell. Before that, there is a concept called license capacity. There is a capacity called capacity to manufacture and sales, then install capacity, then practical operating capacity, so and so forth. So, when you are going to think for expansion decision, it may be extending your capacity, which is not possible within short period, and it is to be practiced in the long run only, and then Expansion decision, it is nothing but is an extension of the very perception called capital budgeting process. The third one, which is coming along with the expansion decision, the third one is diversification decisions. You see nowadays, since 